Hello everyone, welcome back. This time we're talking about frames and machines. You're like, whoa, whoa, went from bridges to machines? Okay, now to be super honest with you here, um, machine has a very vague definition, okay? It's not nearly as weird. We're not gonna have a whole bunch of gears in here, like we got the gears here and we got the pistons moving and it happens that it's going at 50 miles per hour. No, none of that stuff's happening. Do not worry, we can get through this together. So. Talk about frames and machines and how we solve these. It's not going to be bad. You got the skills. So let's keep moving on. And let me get my fun little pin out. Because why not? There we are. So first off, frames, we use them to support stuff. Various external loads are being supported. Now, how is a frame different than a truss? Well, to design a frame, you need to be able to determine the forces at the joints and supports. Another thing we're going to see is that a frame can have multiple force members. So not just two force, where it goes out the ends, but um, three force members, where it has some force that's going perpendicular or at an angle to one of the members. It doesn't happen in a truss, it happens in frames. Okay, so machines. As above are used in a variety of applications. Now, how do you think they're different from trusses and frames? Yeah, this is a great point where I would love to be able to talk to you. Um, the big thing about machines is they are increasing the work you're doing, or at least they're increasing the effectiveness. For example, right here, I am gripping hard, and that is putting a lot more force right here on this bolt, perhaps. Right here, we are using force right here to then transfer that force all the way over here to lift something. Okay, machines are doing something. Frames are just holding something. So, I mean, there's kind of a gray area in there you can see because what happens if a machine is just holding something currently? Is it then a frame? It's all based on its function. The other thing about machines is they typically move. They change. You can see how this machine changes shape. It will extend the arm if it wants to. This one right here, it can crush this. It moves. Frames don't move. Um, they stay stationary so they can support that load. They might have a rope that's pulling the you know, like box upward, perhaps. But in general, the frame will stay stationary within reason. Obviously, in real life, it wobbles a bit, but you get what I mean. Okay. So, let's make sure I pull it there. There you go. So, like I said, frames and machines, they have at least one multi-force member. That's where we have not just one force at the end and one force at the other end. We also have some force coming in the middle. Um, frames are generally stationary and they support stuff. Machines contain moving parts and they're designed to alter the effective forces. So with those pliers, my grip strength is not strong enough to crush something, but I, ex um, I alter my grip strength by enhancing it using those pliers. So this is a machine because it moves, it does work, it enhances things. Um, this is a frame because, there we go, it just supports loads. And both of them have a multi-force member, which we can see right here. Lots of holes. There's a whole lot of forces on that one. Now, how do you analyze this frame or machine? Well, the big thing is this. You know, before we were like, oh, we have the method of joints, method of sections, let's pull those out. It doesn't work quite as well here. You typically have to break each member into its own free body diagram and solve them individually. Um, so do not try to go cutting this and say, well, I can solve it now. Um, it's not what you're supposed to do. It will really get you confused. So we don't usually care about what the force is inside the member now. We care more about what the force is at the supports. We're really caring about those forces at the supports. So in this case, you can see I've got one member right here, one member right here. That gives me two free body diagrams. And one of those free body diagrams, at least, is a two force member. I can tell because there's only a support at either end with no forces along the center. This one right here is a multi-force member. Two supports at the end, but I also have this 2,000 Newton force. If that 2,000 Newton force was moved to one of the supports, maybe fine. Um, but since it's in the middle, this is a multi-force member. 
Okay. So here are pretty much everything I just said. Um, and you should have enough. I mean, always remember that you have a free body diagram for everything together. You have a free body diagram for everything separately. You have a whole lot of equations you can do here. Also, since these have size, you get three equations. Some of the forces and some of the moments. And there's only two things, but some of the forces in the X and the Y. Okay, now these problems can be challenging, especially when you're trying to think about how the forces move. So take it one step at a time, and you have to think to yourself, okay, is the force I'm about to draw being exerted on another object, or is it being exerted on the member? Remember, you care about the force being exerted on the member, not the force it exerts on another object in its particular free body diagram. Because, for example, if you look right here, you see that force AB is pointing up and to the right. Well, if I look at this member, force AB is pointing down and to the left. That's because this top member presses down on the bottom member, and this bottom member presses up on the top member. You only draw the force that it is feeling, not the force that it is making something else feel. So it's a little sign convention to help you with arrows. But remember, if you get the direction wrong, you can always just throw a negative sign or just switch the arrow's direction. It'll be fine. Oh, went too far. Okay, so with that, we're gonna jump into an example and try this out. So, I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.